Price is at five and five. Will the 49ers implode? So we've already talked about the game that we that we have coming up. We already know the injuries involved. But at five and five, the 49ers find themselves in an unusual position. Known for dominance in the regular season, can they handle adversity with class? Or will internal decisions lead to locker room chaos and finger pointing? One of the reasons why I wanted to talk about this is that we've won a lot over the years, a lot. So that's why the, lo the losses stick out. And one thing that I feel is, is, a, is a common denominator is that we're not good losers. Mm. Uh, there there's, tends to be finger pointing. There tends to be comments in the comments that come out from, the, from different players. Uh, we already know that we get the, the perfect Kyle special in post-game interviews. Uh, and one of the things about what, I, in my opinion, the best thing about them losing is that more oftentimes than not, when they lose, the season is over. So we don't have to look at them anymore, right? They can kind of hide away and, you know, it's always, it's already like in one week, we get all of the sound bites, but they get to move on. Losing this game means that the season is essentially over. What do you see for the rest of the season if they start losing games, right? If we don't get Brock Purdy against the Bills, right? And we got to go into, and we got to go against Brandon Allen against the Lions. What do you start, will they lose with class? Right. What, what is one of the biggest things about being a champion, Grant, is knowing how to lose, knowing how to be gracious in defeat, because it shows your championship medal. What do you see moving forward if we do implode and we lose tomorrow? Well, think about it this way. Like they were in the process of imploding in Tampa and they had that little fight in the sideline because right. it was important for Debo to point out that the reason they were losing was special teams. Right. It's your fault. And mm -hmm. I think there was a lot of that, like when the night, like the first 10 games of the season, why are we not that good? Oh, it's special teams. No, it's red zone offense. No, it's, it was a lot of like, you know, a, a lot of the whole team had to like actually look in the mirror. Is it me? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is partially you. But now that, that Brock's out and they lose this weekend. Oh, well, we didn't have our starting quarterback. Easy. Like no one mm -hmm. has to look in the mirror anymore. So I think right. all of a sudden the finger pointing and the angst, it's over. Like everyone's, kind of, it's, it's dead. It's over. And mm -hmm. you can just kind of point at Brandon Allen without pointing at him. It's all understood. It's all his fault. And uh, no, it's, it's, it's not the run defense. It's not anything. It's just that, that we don't have our starting quarterback. And I think that's kind of freeing for them a little bit. But at the same time, like I don't, maybe they will rally around Brandon Allen. I just think they're going to score 10 points, lose a lot and be like, well, not this our fault. This is what it is. This is what it yeah. is. not our fault. Yeah. Well, all right. If Brock does come back, let's take the injury excuse out of it. Right. Because what, what we have right now, we do have injuries, but it just seems to be that they're timely injuries at the wrong time, right? We really need our guys to be here. My biggest issue is, all right, Brock comes back. Nick Bosa gets yep. healthy, and they're yep. still losing, right? That doesn't go away. The Lions, all right, look, we're looking at possible losses because we have these injuries, right? And I, and I get that. But not for nothing. We weren't exactly good with everybody back anyway. <laughs> like, so that, that's something to look at as well. Well, here's kind of what I'm looking at with like buy-in from this team. Like I didn't think there was a lot this season and the team never came together. And so like, let's say they lose this week in Green Bay and they're five and six and then they have to go to Buffalo. Like right now, Bosa's not making the trip. Right. He's not making the trip to Green Bay. And it's like, okay, right. You know, he's not going to play and he can just do this rehab at home. But um, I don't know, like at a certain point, like, like Trent Williams is making the trip and he may not play. He's a game time decision. At a certain point, like our older players going to be like, you know what? I'm hurt. I'm not playing this week. You know what? I need surgery. I'm done. Yeah. I, that's the kind of thing that happens. Like some, instead of like playing it out to the bitter end, people just kind of start dropping off. You know what? I'll see you guys next year. I'm out for yeah. legit reasons, but yeah. that could be kind of what happens to this team. Right. Happened because you, you, yeah. You think about it. There's always been nicks and bruises along the way where, I don't know, like on the backdrop of winning or trying to get a Super Bowl, all of that stuff seems like, you know, the context is, well, you're going to do your best to get on the field. Like but not Kittle last year, he was going through something. He had like, a, I don't know, what was it, a core muscle, something. Yeah, like a core situation. All yeah. year. And then he got the surgery after the season. Like maybe if you're five and seven, five and eight, it's like, you Let's know what, I'm just going to get that up. surgery now. So I'm ready for OTAs. A hundred percent. You know, I can see that too. So business decisions could possibly get made as, as we start losing. Because if you wait until f February to get the surgery, then that ruins your entire off season, and it and it could affect your next season's preparation, depending on when you're done. I don't know. These are decisions yeah. that people will have to make in a couple of weeks if they lose, which we expect them to. And I'm looking at both. You got two soft tissue injuries right now. 
You've already had a core muscle surgery. Is he coming back? Does it depend on what the Niners do in the next couple of weeks? Yeah. I mean, right now, the injuries, as far as like guys being able to come back 100%, uh, where you stand in the season, as far as being playoff bound, does make a huge difference in what guys want to do with their bodies. And then one thing is what's good for the goose is good for the gander. You look at both sides of it. On one side, you could look at Kyle. You know, let's look at the Brock situation, how Kyle is in a way saying, hey, you know, it's kind of like up to you if you want to play. If you can go, you can go. If you can't, you can't. We already looked at the MRI. There was nothing there. Right. Moving forward, that type of attitude can tell it can make a guy say, hey, well, I'm done. <laughs> We're five and eight. We're five and seven, bro. Like there's nothing really to come back to. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and just start my off season early. Go I just want to point out, though, that I think Jimmy did a similar thing in 2020 coming off a Super Bowl loss. He injured his ankle. It never really got That's right. Where Trey Lance think- came from. Yes. So he kind of shut himself. He came back, tried to fight it through because the, t- the season was still viable. Then they mm-hmm. start to lose, and he's like, I'm done. And I think that season, Kittle missed eight games too, but came back for the last two. A lot of vets, Jimmy Ward came back for the last couple of games. So like, I'm still invested. Jimmy didn't. And I think, yeah. Ky- I think Kyle may have held it against him, and I think that's maybe why he made the emotional decision to trade up. Not for Trey Lance. Trade up for the number three pick so they could think about maybe taking Trey Lance or Justin Fields or trading for J- Aaron Rodgers. Like, anyway, I think that's... I will never have- get over yeah. that. I will never get over the fact that they admitted that they did not want Trey Lance going up to three. They just wanted the opportunity to pick whoever fell after Mm -hmm. one and two. That's Mm -hmm. so wild to me. Yeah, agree. I I will never understand that. 